the Lord, praise the Lord, everyone. It is me, Ebony Evans, and I'm so excited. As you can see, this is a completely different type of setting, but I love it. Um, I Listen, this is where God has brought me, and I just want to share what, what God is speaking in this um, in this season. And I come with you with gratitude and, and praise because... I don't know about you, but nobody can ever love me like Jesus. Nobody can ever comfort me. When the world turns their back on me, I don't care who you are, family, friends, sister, brother, it doesn't matter. When the world turns their back on you, God is always there. And so this is a different element because this is a very peculiar time in the seasons of the Lord where God is really um, calling his daughters to rise up. And so I want to read something to you that God shared with me that is so amazing. And this comes from Jeremiah 5, and it's verse 4. And it says, The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet, as my prophet to the nations. O oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, Don't say I'm too young. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. Listen to God telling Jeremiah, do not be afraid of the people. I think that's critical for where we are in our lives right now. God is telling us, don't be afraid of people. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you, some you must uproot and tear down. Now this is a prophetic message because it's bringing forth what's to come. Listen to what the Lord just told Jeremiah. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down. What is God telling you that you have to uproot in your life or in your situation? Or, or what dead thing do you have to uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow? And then God says, others you must build up and plant. Then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right, and it means that I am watching, and I will certainly carry out all my plans. So God gave Jeremiah this vision, and in this vision, he showed him what was getting ready to happen. And he told him, hey, I'm getting ready to uproot some things. I'm getting ready to overthrow some things. The old ways are not working. So I, the Lord, by my spirit, have to come in and revitalize and resurrect this thing so it can bring forth life and it, it can bring forth destiny and so God told him he said do you see he said look what what I put in front of you and when the Lord said what do you see Jeremiah said I see the branch of an almond tree and so this is so amazing this is so amazing because I've read Jeremiah uh, chapter one so many times because it speaks to me and who I'm who I am and who God has called me to be as a prophet, as a woman of God, as a woman who, who is who is after God's own heart. But what's amazing, this word literally came alive this morning and it just rested so heavy on my chest. And so along with that, let me tell you what brought me to the word. So I, somebody commented on a, a video that I posted about a month ago and it's a video where it says, the Lord, um, Lord, open my eyes to see. And I noticed when they commented on the video, I went to the likes because I noticed it was eight, eight, eight. It was three eights in a row. And soon as I noticed that, God told me, He said, "Look up the symbolism of number eight. And so I looked up the symbolism, and this is what came up. Y'all, my mind was blown because it's such a timely um, 
biblical number that is so fitting for where I am in my life. And I know if it's fitting for me, it's fitting for you. And so this is, I wrote it down. I said, so I saw the numbers 888 this morning and the Lord spoke to me and said, look up the biblical meaning of number eight. The first thing I saw when I looked up the, the what the meaning of number eight was, the first word that popped up in big bold letters was resurrection, resurrection. Number eight means new beginnings, hope, new horizons and bright future it's connected with Jesus and his resurrection because Jesus resurrected because God raised Jesus from the dead we now have hope that the the rest of the world cannot operate in without God's spirit because of this hope that's in us because of his spirit that lives in us we have destiny that no devil no demon no dark angel can ever snatch away no matter what we go through in life and so the first thing I saw was resurrection and I'm like oh Jesus hallelujah so this is a little more of what the, the word um, what the number eight means it says God saved eight people on the ark in order to have a new beginning of mankind after the flood eight is the number of Jesus whose name in the Greek adds up to 888 times. What was the number that I saw on that video? 888. And eight is the number of Jesus whose name in Greek adds up to 888 times. That's not a coincidence. Matter of fact, there are no coincidences when it comes to our sovereign Lord because he is the Lord of provision. He is the all-seeing God, the omnipotent God. He's everywhere at the same time. This is who our Jesus is. So listen to this. God even brought me to the Hebrew calendar. And Chesven is the Hebrew month that starts in October or November. So this is what this is what was so amazing to me. Chesven is a season of new beginnings according to the Hebrew calendar. A season of new beginnings. It is the month. What month are we in? October. I don't know about you, but I've been through hell and back. I don't know about you, but I am currently in a season of wilderness. I don't know about you, but I am currently being tried by fire. Okay? And it's so amazing that God is, is, is has brought me to a season of new beginnings. It says it is the month that the flood, that the flood began. It's also when Noah was able to leave the ark a year later. It's believed to be the season for the Messiah to come to establish his temple. Now, Chesven starts in October or November. We are currently in October. And I think God has, is uprooting things in your life. It's, it's, it, maybe it's been something that you've been dealing with for years. And it took for God's sovereignness to come in and snatch you out of because you didn't have the strength to do it yourself. Or maybe you've been fighting with the same weapons and you have been seeing loss after loss. God has come through his spirit to snatch you on out of that so you can surrender, so you can allow the Lord to fight your battles. Um, Exodus 14, 14 says, hold thy peace, the Lord shall fight for you. So this is a season, y'all, of new beginnings where we are putting down our old weapons of warfare and we are picking up God's spirit and we are laying ourselves down fully where we are allowing the Lord to fight our battles. And because we are doing that, now that is creating a new beginning in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives where God is able to establish things that cannot be torn down. He's going to be able to establish things that will not be uprooted because it was established by his spirit. And so what's even more amazing is the next month after that, according to the Hebrew calendar, is the Kislev. Now, if I'm not pronouncing these right, please forgive me. But the Kislev is the next month after Chesven. And Kislev starts in November or December. And Kislev is known as a season of security, trust, and bringing things full circle. Season of life's dreams and success in battles from a place of peace. You cannot reach that place of, that, that place of peace from battles until you surrender 
to the Lord. You cannot come into full circle until you let that new beginning manifest in your heart. That new beginning is symbolism of you laying everything down for God to do what only he can do in your heart and in your life. And so I just thought that was so amazing. And um, it just refers back to uh, Jeremiah when God gave him the vision of the almond tree. And that almond tree represented resurrection. And it actually was a foreshadowing of what was to come, which is the Messiah, King Jesus, the anointed one, who was going to be resurrected on the third day and who was going to give the atonement for our sins. So I say this to you. It does not matter what you are going through. It does not matter what demons, what, what wickedness has come against you. Jesus Christ is on the throne. In your life, you are covered by the blood of the Lamb. And what's so even amazing about that is the Bible says, for they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Our testimony is what Jesus Christ did. Our testimony is that because he is resurrected, he is resurrecting us. And if we can just suffer a little while longer, we are getting ready to be raised up in glory in this life, in Jesus' name. My Lord, my prayer is, Lord, help us to cling to your spirit. Help us to cling to your forgiveness. Help us to cling to your spiritual armor because we need it now more than ever god is simply telling you your new beginning is on the horizon your new beginning is coming your way and not only that right when god told jeremiah all it is this is so prophetic god and it uh, it brings tears to your eyes because right let me find it Right when the Lord gave Jeremiah this vision and told him that you are going to uproot kingdoms and you're going to reestablish things and you're going to overthrow things and then you're going to build things and then you're going to plant things. Right after this, now I got to go to King James Version now. Right after this, this is what the Sovereign Lord said. He said, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. For I will hasten my word to perform it. For I will quicken my word. I will hurry up my word. I will bring forth acceleration to my word to perform it. We do not serve a God who lies. Our God is sovereign. So this is God telling us that I will watch over my word to perform it. God is saying, everything that I promise you is coming to pass. You have to hold on in this season because your new beginning is happening now. And this is something else that God wants me to tell you. It is, you're not going to feel it. You're not going to see it. Even though you are praying and warring in the spirit, it's, it's going to feel like nothing is changing. But God says you have to believe him. You have to believe everything that he spoke to you concerning you and your life. God said it, so God is going to do it. God promised it, so God is performing it. And it might not feel like it. It might not seem like it. But God says, I will hasten my word. I will hasten my word to perform it. So he's watching over his word to perform it. He's bringing forth acceleration to you. But you have to hold on to the Father. You have to cling to his spirit in this season because this is a season of new beginning. You think you went through all that hell for no reason? No, God is doing something new in you. You think those people came against you for no reason? No, God is bringing forth a new destiny in you. You think this is all for naught? Absolutely not. God is bringing forth a newness in you so i just wanted to share that guys and i pray that you guys enjoyed this so much i love you guys and let's just close out in prayer father god in the name of jesus we give you the glory we give you the praise we give you the honor for you alone are worthy we welcome you holy spirit in our lives we know that we serve a God who is living, the God who is for us, who goes before us, who is behind us, who surrounds us. You said that there are chariots of fire surrounding your children, for we do not operate 
in this earthly realm, we get our strength from heaven. We get our strength from the well that never runs dry. In this season, Lord, it is my prayer that your daughters and your sons will stay rooted in the word of God. No matter what it feels like, we will declare and we will decree what thus saith the Lord. We will hold on to the promises of God. We will hold on to the healing of God. We will hold on to the manifestation of the Lord. We will hold on. We will not give up on you because you will never give up on us. So, Father God, this is our prayer that we will have eyes like Jeremiah. We will see what you are showing us. Bless us to be prudent. Bless us to be vigilant. Bless us to be aware of your spirit, aware of the things that you want us to learn. Bless us to test every word. This is a time to not be in our slumber. This is a time to be awake in the spirit. Father God, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you and we need you. And we say new beginnings are happening. New beginnings are taking place. New horizons are happening in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we thank you and bless us to cling to your mighty spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, yes, please understand, y'all, that this is the word of the Lord. And don't just believe me. You seek the Father. You seek whatever it is that he wants to confirm to you. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established unto you. Seek the Father's face. You go to the Lord and ask, Lord, what is it that I need to see this season? What is it that you want me to know? Because he's speaking, y'all. So I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Love you in Jesus' name. Keep me in your prayers, as I will keep you lifted in prayers as well. Bye. Oh, don't forget, prayer call is every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you subscribe to my email list because I send emails out in every month. And make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I have so many more videos coming. I love you guys in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.